If you want to find post-traumatic growth, then I have seven goal setting tips to help you in your personal development. You may be saying to yourself, I've heard about post-traumatic growth, but how do I find it? This video is designed to help you. If recovery and growth is your mission, then I will provide many additional ideas to help you achieve your goals. Setting and achieving goals is difficult for many people. We all have experienced different trials and traumas, and I want you to know that growth is possible after your challenge. There are five areas of post-traumatic growth, and many can identify growth in at least one of these areas. They are increased personal strength, a greater appreciation for life, finding a closer relationship with others, finding new opportunities in life, and finding a greater connection with the universe or some spirituality. I made another video on post-traumatic growth for beginners that has more details about this. If we're just meeting for the first time, I'm Hugh Watt, founder and author of Trial Tappers. Who are Trial Tappers? People that find hope, resilience, and post-traumatic growth after life's trials and traumas. Our motto is, we tap pain, we find a path, and we grow stronger. I want to give you some ideas I teach others, but this is only advice, not therapy, so seek additional assistance if needed. I used many of these tools when I decided to write my books, designed to help others achieve post-traumatic growth. As I say in my book, as a trial tapper, I focus my energy on those things I can control. I also love the book Limitless by Jim Quick. One quote from him is, if our mindset is not aligned with our desires or goals, we will never achieve them. Here are my secret tips to achieve your goals and find post-traumatic growth. Tip one, many people have heard of making SMART goals created by George Duran in 1981. Those being goals that are specific, measurable, obtainable, realistic, and timely, or SMART. Then the goals were expanded to SMARTER, or adding E stands for evaluate your progress and maybe appraisal of your goals and your, how far you've gone, and R is the stands for the reward or the, the progress, the reflection on what you have done to achieve this goal. Tip number two, small goals increase personal strength. Building strength takes time. Growth is not quick or easy, and trauma can make people feel weak and confused. First, make efforts to increase your feelings of personal safety in this world. Trials and traumas at times can leave you with feelings of fear and weakness. Look for signs of strength going forward. What you focus on expands. Look for the growth you have had in this trial. If you make an effort to stretch yourself, just improve 1% from where you are now. In my experience, small goals make big differences. Set six weeks of small goals, for example, work out five minutes a day, do five push-ups, walk 15 minutes a day, share one fear with others, go to one support group during this week. Doing these smaller or shorter term goals will help you find a pattern to the long-term goal. Next, identify your strengths. Look at how your life has changed and is changing in the core areas of family, work, school, and social relationships. Make a list of your strengths. This leads me to the next tip. Tip number three is set goals to connect with others. Strength comes when you humble yourself to ask for help from others. This could be friends, clergy, coworkers, support groups, or therapists. Set goals to spend time and share your progress with someone else. Many find strength when you can help each other be accountable and supportive. Look to appreciate relationships you have and want to have. Here is a list of tips that can help you increase your connection with others. Tip number four, set goals to appreciate life more. These are also identified as positive coping mechanisms or things that help in difficult times in life. Positive things you do to cope with trials. Here's a list of things others have found that help. They include things like deep breaths and meditating. Tip number five, set goals to physically recharge. You need to prepare a list of things that help you recharge or recover when you are drained, stressed, or overwhelmed. It could be one of the things I just mentioned in the last tip. It could be listening to positive books, exercising, meditating, or working on a project. What can you do in five minutes to recharge or recover? What can you do in 15 minutes? What can you do in 30 minutes? What can you do in one hour 
What could you do in half a day? And what could you do in a weekend? Here are more ideas to help you recharge. Tip number six, set a goal to look for new opportunities. After a trial or trauma, many people want to find meaning, a purpose or mission in life to help them move forward. Grief and loss are normal and you can't avoid these realities. As you mourn, it can cause some profound emptiness and despair. I experienced this when I lost my younger brother to suicide. My mission and new opportunity were found in writing my book series, Trial Dappers. Knowing that my trauma is now helping others strengthened me and helped me recover. If you are struggling to find your mission, one way many find helpful is to be grateful every day. Look for the positives in life and how this trial might improve something in your life. One common practice is to identify three things you are grateful for each day. Tip number seven, set goals to connect with the universe or increase your spirituality. Even if you don't believe in an organized religion, millions of people do. Over 80% of the world's population have some religious belief system. Connection with something greater than yourself, like the surrounding community through service or religion can help. Religion can play an important role in post-traumatic growth in many ways. People who are involved in religious organizations have a greater chance to report post-traumatic growth than those who do not. It is not uncommon when helping people, they can move closer to their spiritual connection and some move away. Give yourself grace and forgiveness when you fall short of your goal and are struggling in this area. Others that don't follow religion often report looking for that connection with nature or the universe. One of the complaints about the smarter goals is that there is no identified action. So here is your action step. Number one, write down your goals. It was once said, goals that are not written down are just wishes. Write them down. Post them where you can see them. Evaluate your progress every day. Action step number two, share your goals with others. When you share your goals with others, it increases your commitment and accountability. You might even ask them to follow up with you from time to time to help you in your progress. Question, what three steps will you take this week to achieve your goals of post-traumatic growth? If you want to learn how to become a trial tapper and how to find post-traumatic growth, then you're going to want to watch my other videos on this subject. If your mission is to help others, I encourage you to share your experience and this video with others. Subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos and I'll see you next time.